Oi, eu me chamo Júlia, eu sou designer e moro no Brasil. Eu sou Feng Yuan, eu sou de China, eu sou de China. 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 Eu As creative people, we all have side project ideas, but really, let's face it, most of them never see the light of day. So why is that? What does it take to go from an idea all the way to a launch project? As Peter said, I'm Robin Noge, I'm a freelance designer. I design interfaces in all kind of stuff, like uh, product, digital website, and uh, digital experiences and marketing website. I was one of the really early designers at Weno, This is supposed to be me as a toy. Um, I work for a lot of clients that you're really bored to see on logo walls, I'm sure, but I still needed to show them somewhere so we'll feel like I'm a big deal. I'm not. Um, as part of Teams, I've been uh, fortunate enough to work with people that I see in the room uh, for um, Uber.com, Oculus, um, Project for Red Bull, and a lot of prototypes because this is really what I love. As a freelancer, I got to do some landing page for Google, portfolio for photographers, and most likely a lot of different products. Okay, that's enough about me. Today, we're not going to talk about that. Today, we're going to talk about side project. We're going to see how to actually start your side project. An idea comes, and you see it. Can you that's from Claudio, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to continue. Uh, so we're going to see how we can trick your mind to actually put in the work. We're going to see the outcomes of a side project like this. For me, it was the Esperanto website. And we're going to talk about the outcomes of a project like that. And when we're going to see how far, so for me, it was literally far, it can lead you. Let's talk about how to start your side project, because I really hope that at the end of this talk, you're going to be able to apply the same mindset to build your own side project. Because maybe this year you want to finally launch your portfolio that you started somewhere around 2012. Oh, you just like bought all the things to record a, a podcast, but you never recorded one episode. While doing this, you also discover new talents, and you might even be inspired to hit the road. So let's go. But first, let's ask ourselves, what is a side project? For me, side projects are a way to learn new things, fulfill your creativity, and experiment. So yes, I could tell, tell you about like, all the different companies that have started as a side project. But for me, it doesn't have to be something successful. Like, this year I'm trying to learn piano. This is one of my side projects. It's going terrible so far, but I'm just really liking the process of learning something new. To talk about this side project, Esperanto, I will just need to rewind a little. So let's go back from Amsterdam, February 2020, all the way back to um, October 2017, when I was still working at Weno in San Francisco. We're almost there. Stay with me. All right. All right. So now we're in October 2017, and I'm, I'm, I was working at Weno in sunny and foggy most of the time, San Francisco. When I was there, I quickly realized how fortunate we were having the chance to work on projects like I just showed you, being featured in articles, and all that in a really nice environment. <laughs> Most of you will say, well, what's the problem, right? The problem was that I really thought that we were really too fortunate and that other people should have the same opportunities as we do. Because if we just take a step back and look at the most top 100 people on Dribbble, on Behance, the latest interface lovers uh, uh, interviews, or also like the nationality of the jury awards, we can really see the difference between US and Europe versus the rest of the world. But if you actually look at the population in the world, it's quite the opposite. 
So as Leila Jenna said, talent is equality distributed, but opportunity is not. So I really became obsessed about, the, about that idea that I wanted to show that there's good designers everywhere, and not only where we are and where we're supposed to, um, only in Europe and the US. So the Esperanto project like, was just in front of me. But as I told before, it was still just an idea, a wish. So how can I make that happen? First, by taking the first tiny step that will get you started. Because I see too many to-do lists looking like that. Launch portfolio, learn 3D, and record podcast, even go to the moon. But this is like way too big of a task. You really need to divide the big task into small and doable tasks. So you just like tick something and you really feel that you're already getting started. If we take the, back the portfolio example, it could be to buy your own domain name, to look at other portfolios, Look, I said look at all of our portfolios. Don't copy. Let Jenny alone. Leave Jenny alone. Uh, and create a mood board. Those are the few things that can really get you started, right? I think we think way too much. And that block us, where the first thing is to just start. Like, we always asking yourself all the questions, like, is it worth it? Can I scale this? Will people like that? We just need to start, and we'll figure it out. Once you started, and to keep that momentum ready, um, going, try to assign a block, a block of time every day to work on this. We are cre creative of habits, and it will be way easier to work on something when you actually know where to work on it. In other words, aim for consistency over intensity. Because it's, it will get you further if you work on something for uh, 30 minutes every day and then like a few hours every few weeks. I've always been dreaming about traveling the world. But for as long as I can also remember, I really wanted to work in San Francisco. So those two dreams I've been fighting in my head quite a lot the past few years. But sometimes, you really need to ask yourself, if not now, when? So even though I was really happy at Weno, I decided that I will leave San Francisco. I told it to my uh, company, I got this uh, really crazy party. Uh, and when I told it to my boss, Harald Dottolefsson, he got this kind of answer around the line of, do it and come back once you return. So kind of the best answer a boss can give you. So shout out to Holly. <laughs> when you do this and you send it to the company, you really think like the, the hardest part is behind you, right? You send it to the company, you're going to do it, you're going to travel the world and all this. But it's really not. Then, come, then comes all the you shouldn't comments. All the you shouldn't comments. And for all your portfolios, you will have the same thing. Like for me, it, it, it was, you shouldn't leave Bueno because it's a really fast-growing agency. And it is. Uh, you shouldn't quit San Francisco because you work for years to be there. Or you shouldn't travel the world because it's just not safe. All those comments will happen to you for any kind of side project you want to start. So just try to block out the noise. I told to my two best friends that I will travel the world and I asked them to come with me. Weirdly, they say yes, because maybe I'm pretty convincing. Uh, I told them about that Esperanto project, and I told them that they would be less chilling for me and more co-working space. And they accepted, and they even came at every interview out of curiosity, because they are in a totally different field. So it feels good to have friends like that. To spice that up a little, because that was like too easy to just travel the world. We wanted to like, add some rules. So three rules, only, only go to a country we've never been to, stay there at least three weeks minimum, because it was the time for me to uh, really discover the culture, and also I needed to find talents. The third one is a weird one, right? No SIM card, what's that? I really didn't want it to rely too much on my phone to get around and 
look at Google Maps and just be aware. And I didn't want any notification during the day, just to be in the present moment for a year. But we'll t touch back on that later. So we choose the countries. Here they were, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, China, Japan, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. So that's just tiring just to say. So imagine going all the way to all those countries. So now everything was ready. So I just had to go and catch them all. Now we're going to talk about how to actually put in the work, because they didn't do anything yet. Uh, the first task for me was to like, spend hours online trying to find talents that could use some exposure. So my laptop was always kind of looking like this, a thousand tabs open, trying to see everywhere, typing design in Sri Lanka, and just looking like, at the results. So out of the 80 creatives I contacted, because I like their story, their background, everything, only 46 replied. It's kind of hard, and this is where you need to put the ego on the side and continue going. Out of those 46 conversations, only 60, uh, I picked 16, one of each country. I wasn't looking really for the most famous one or the better at their craft, but I was re really looking for the passion for their work. So I did go to those 16 offices in 16 countries. The interview was like in three parts. The first part was really all about them, their story, their background, their experience. I was just like asking about them, them, them. And then I was taking a step back, really because I wanted to shine a light on all the industry. And so I was asking about the industry in uh, the country. And the third part was something that super new that I had to learn. And this is what side projects are for. It was doing photo shoot and trying to make them comfortable in front of the camera and trying to find a nice scenery and all this. I took quite a few pictures of them during the year. Even when they were working, uh, even if that meant being in a really awkward position like that. But Esperanto was way more than this, was way more than just asking questions. It was all about like meeting at the human level. So we've all had the fun and sometimes sketchy experience that meant. Because we had no SIM card, we were lost in Sri Lanka, and like, we couldn't find Lahesh, the first one. But a few tuk-tuk later, we actually found him. Found him. He welcomed us with coffee and donuts, which I don't believe is the real speciality of Sri Lanka, per se, but it really gave me strength to continue, because I was like, if I can maybe like, help that guy, I could maybe help other people uh, get, get a bit of recognition. The problem to go to people's office, though, were not over. This is Beijing, China. I was pretty happy to uh, have a cab. But when you, when you go into the cab and you have no common language and you only have like a, a really bad offline version of Google Translate, it becomes really hard to communicate. Or well, this time in Indonesia, where after the interview, Alfred gave me a statue and that I have now in my office. That was the fun part. Then came the nightmare of transcripting everything that had been said during the articles. I had around two hours of transcript uh, for each interview, which is almost 32 hours of transcript to write by hand. Not really fun, right? So as you can see in that video, during the whole year, in hotels, airports, everywhere, it was me with my headphones on trying to work on the transcript. Like, what did you just send there? And after that, that was the longest part. After that, I had to write, actually, all, all those articles. I was really trying to write them to not lose their, their personal style and their essence, but, and also checking with them if they like what I wrote. But now let's talk about uh, the website, because the content was ready, and we could talk about the website. So for me, I was still on the road designing, and I really thought about, OK, who I'll be collaborating with. After waiting for a month for a freelancer that didn't find the time to do it, I had another idea. Why won't I give it to a student so it's actually helping him as well? 
Well, he was too busy with school stuff, so he decided that he, he couldn't do the project as well. So I was like in May 2020, uh, 2019, sorry, and five months after during this war trip, and I was almost ready to quit. Like, I was kind of looking like this at that point, like pretty tired. But this is the moment where you really need to keep fighting. <laughs> I have a photo of me for everything. Like. <laughs> Who can help you when you're in that stage? Well, friends. And now I'm just going to be introducing to all of you Julien Renault. Julien is a senior creative technologist at Huge Medellin. We met at Ueno a few years ago and since then become, became one of my closest friends. He visited me three times during the work trip, so he knew better than anyone how hard I worked for that project, so I shouldn't quit. So we decided we'll do that together. So um, we wanted this adventure vibe as soon as possible. So that's why we built a loader that is actually representing a compass loading from zero degree to 360 degrees with all the countries I've been to. To also get this adventure vibe, we wanted to retrace linearly the journey I've been through uh, during the year. We tried a couple of stuff, but we really like something simple kind of simple, uh, <laughs> use, using only the vehicles I use the most during each country to really like, better tell the story and, of course, add a bit of playfulness. The UX problem with that timeline, though, was that we were giving way more exposure to Laesh from Sri Lanka, the first one, than Valentina, the last one, from Chile. So we had to design a menu like this that gives you a quick access to every country. Of course, every, every um, interview he gets his own uh, article to have this content there. I didn't have any voice in that project, so that's where the about page really came handy to talk about the Esperanto story, what we stand for, and all that. I didn't go to every country I wanted to, so Esperanto will forever be a work in progress. And this is the idea I wanted to finish the timeline by. So just a logo and a, a mail address. When doing those, those kind of projects, of course, like handheld devices are becoming way more um, and more important. Of course, we are designers and creatives, so we had a lot of fun with all the kind of transitions uh, between pages. and. For example, this one going from the timeline to the article that is actually like the same vehicle you choose, or this one where I actually had to take the same photo for a year to be able to do. Um, and a few Easter eggs like this one where when you click on um, different vehicles, they trigger different kind of animations. We finally launched in December 2019, which if you remember well, it's two years after starting. It's now live, by the way, Esperanto.design. Now let's talk about the outcomes. So the outcomes so far. Uh, the website have been shared in 161 countries over the world. The articles have been read somewhere around like 2,000 uh, times each on average. Uh, they all receive uh, a ton of messages this I'm pretty happy about because I know how hard it is to actually get a visa to go work in the US, and we have actually helped someone to get his O1 visa, so I was pretty happy about that. I'm already talking to eight possible countries, uh, including Puerto Rico, Pakistan, India, and uh, so if you have an interesting story to tell, uh, please reach out for maybe a next possible Esperanto. But all this is just data. I could tell you all about it, but I think it's really better if I let them talk directly to you. Toronto is one of the best things ever happened to me as a designer. It brought me so much confidence. I gained more credibility from prospective clients. I, I got a few messages from designers from different countries. Esperanto me vino de por sí más confianza. It was really, really nice getting messages from people that I would have been following for years. 
自分も世界の一部であるということを気づかせてくれましたそして自分も世界のどっかの誰かに影響を与えうるという緊張感や自信をもたらしてくれました no, no hablamos el mismo lenguaje en idioma pero podemos lograr entender en el lenguaje de diseño and these are the type of side projects that change the landscape that we work in it's refreshing to have access to so many different design cultures there are not the traditional ones that we look for when we need inspiration proyectos como esperanto ayudan mucho a la industria a que pueda haber una conexión más grande a nivel global. Estamos separados físicamente, pero unidos por la creatividad. I think we definitely need more projects to document the diversity of our design industry. Love sweat and tears that he put in this project is pretty astonishing, um, especially seeing the inside of how he did all these interviews, how he recorded all of them, transcribed all of them. And the amount of effort for someone to do that on their own and unpaid is pretty phenomenal. Esperanto can be helped every year in different countries. Para Roy, muchísimas gracias de nuevo y espero ver esperan todos. I hope to see it too. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, so, what about me? What did I learn while traveling the world? So. When you travel for so long, you're always wondering about where to go, where to sleep, where to eat, all that. And so you always have to adapt, and I think it's a great soft skill for a designer. But Esperanto was all about experiences as well, like playing soccer with local kids in Cambodia, or living in the Amazonian jungle for a few days, or um, living in a van in Australia, which was a lot of driving, a lot of eating on the beach, and some singing. Let's stop here. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't sure about that one. Uh, New Zealand as well, living in a van, but except it was just colder. And when you're doing all that crazy thing, why not just jumping out of an airplane in Australia? Because, yeah, it's the, the year. Um, I also learned the hard way, the really, really hard way, that you shouldn't touch your eyes after eating spicy food in Vietnam. <laughs> That's something you do once, you will never do twice. <laughs> uh, I also learned to listen to people. Um, I think in a weird way, most of the time, we're not carefully listening. We're just waiting for the person to finish talking so we, we can say what we have to say. And I realized that when I was doing my interviews, and I was already thinking about the answer of my next question, and I wasn't paying attention to the answer of my previous one. So that's uh, a skill that I got doing the interviews, and that is really helpful, not as a designer, but just uh, in my life in general. I also learned about photography, as I told you before. Like, I didn't know anything about photography before, and so I learned about composition, lightning, and all that kind of stuff that can be applied to design. I really love taking portraits, because there's a story behind all of them. Uh, it's always about a meaning with a few laugh, and even when we don't speak the same language as you, as you can see in that video, there's always like this kind of connection. Not sure if she likes her portrait. <laughs> so, uh, when you travel for so long, you spend a lot of time on transport. Duh. So, um, you, because we decided to not have any SIM card, you know what happened? You, can, you, you can't really like scroll one of your feed on Netflix or watch YouTube or something, and so you just get bored. But in a really good way. Because I think nowadays, like, we don't get bored anymore. You're in a line for 15 seconds, and you just, like, you might start to wander, and you just pull out your phone and scroll one of your feed. And that's something that we should work on because I, I, it's proven, and I think that boredom helps stimulate creativity. And all the ideas I had during this war trip was during long bus drives. So the record is 26 hours, by the way. Uh, it's more than a day. It's quite long. So uh, just to, um, to recap a little, um, when doing a side project, try to really block out the noise and stop all the is it worth it kind of questions. Try to start small and divide the big task into small and doable tasks. Try to be consistent 
because and try to, to try to put the work uh, in every day. Don't quit. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty obvious. And uh, underestimate the amount of work that is needed. Just try to do things one, one step at a time without even thinking about the finish line. We, to, we see how long it can take to do a side project like this. Um, Esper all that learning and experiences made Esperanto an experience you, get, you can get once in a lifetime. So I really hope you like traveling the world with me. And most importantly, I really hope that it inspire each one of you to create a side project. Never forget that the journey of a thousand miles always begins with one step. And I really can't wait to know in which direction you will be taking yours. Thank you.